Welcome to Explain, a series of health education programs published by the Patient Education Institute, the leading provider of interactive health education. This video includes general medical information and does not replace the medical advice of your doctor or healthcare provider. If you have questions pertaining to your medical condition, ask your doctor or healthcare provider. Aortobifemoral Bypass Introduction Clogged arteries in the abdomen and legs can lead to severe pain in the legs. Clogged arteries may result in a total loss of blood supply to the legs. If this occurs, one or both legs could begin to die. The dead or dying tissue may have to be amputated. Healthcare providers may recommend surgery for people suffering from clogged arteries. If your healthcare provider recommends surgery for you, the decision whether or not to have surgery is also yours. This patient education module will help you understand better the benefits and risks of this surgery. Anatomy Blood is carried to and from the heart by blood vessels. The blood vessels that carry blood from the heart to other organs are called arteries. Blood returns to the heart through the blood vessels called veins. A normal artery has smooth walls. Such arteries are common in children and young adults. The arteries can get clogged with plaque, which consists primarily of cholesterol. As the plaque layer thickens, it becomes more difficult for the blood to reach the organs. This condition is called hardening of the arteries. The heart pumps blood into a big artery known as the aorta. The aorta divides into two main arteries in the abdomen called iliac arteries. These in turn branch off into the femoral arteries, which supply most of the blood to the legs. Symptoms and their causes When cholesterol clogs the blood vessels in the lower abdomen or upper leg, the blood flow to the legs is decreased. This causes the legs to hurt, especially after walking or exercising. This condition is known as arterial or vascular claudication. If the loss of blood supply becomes severe, the tissue in the affected leg could die and may have to be cut off or amputated. Sponsored by the Patient Education Institute. www.patient-education.com Over 5,000 videos and interactive tutorials. Alternative Treatments a healthy diet low in saturated and trans fat may reduce plaque buildup. Not smoking is essential to preventing plaque buildup. Regular exercise could also help to reduce and prevent plaque buildup. Certain medications may also be appropriate. An alternative treatment requires the insertion of a catheter into the artery. This procedure is known as angioplasty. During this procedure, the plaque is crushed by a small balloon, which is inserted into the artery through a catheter. Special lasers or other mechanical instruments are sometimes used to open the clogged segment instead of a balloon. The instruments also enter the artery through a catheter. If your arteries are significantly blocked and if you are not a candidate for the previously described procedures, your healthcare provider may recommend surgery. Surgery helps to bypass the plaque, reduce the pain, and prevent tissue death in the legs. Surgical Treatment The aim of the operation is to allow the blood to flow freely into the legs from the aorta. This operation is performed under general anesthesia. Depending on the operation, one or more incisions may be needed. To open a pathway between the legs and the aorta, a tube-like graft is placed from the aorta into one or both femoral arteries. This graft functions as a replacement artery that bypasses the clogged arteries going to the legs. The graft is made of synthetic material that has been extensively used and has been shown to be very safe. At the end of the operation, the incision or incisions are closed. 
Your health care provider will tell you how long you are likely to stay in the hospital. This depends on several factors, such as your age and medical condition. Depending on how quickly you recover, you may go home after spending two or three nights at the hospital. Risks and Complications This operation is very safe. There are, however, several possible risks and complications which are unlikely but possible. You need to know about them just in case they happen. By being informed, you may be able to help your healthcare provider detect complications early. The risks and complications include those related to anesthesia and those related to any type of surgery. Risks related to anesthesia include, but are not limited to, heart attacks, strokes, and pneumonia. These risks will be discussed with you in greater detail by your anesthesiologist. Blood clots in the legs can occur. These usually show up a few days after surgery. They cause the leg to swell and hurt. These blood clots can be dislodged from the legs and go to the lungs, where they will cause shortness of breath, chest pain, and possibly death. Sometimes the shortness of breath can happen without warning. It is therefore extremely important to let your health care providers know if any of these symptoms occur. Getting out of bed shortly after surgery may help decrease the risk of blood clots in the legs. Some of the risks are seen in any type of surgery. These include 1. Infection, deep or at the skin level. 2. Bleeding, either during or after the operation. 3. A skin scar that may be painful or ugly. Other risks and complications are related specifically to this surgery. These, again, are very rare. However, it is important to know about them. The following organs in the abdomen and legs are close to the surgical area. They may be damaged directly or their blood supply could be affected. The abdominal organs, such as liver, stomach, and intestines, including the small intestines and colon, could be damaged. The kidneys, the bladder, and the tubes that connect them could be injured. The internal female organs, such as uterus and ovaries, could be affected. There is even a rare chance of spinal cord stroke. This could create problems with the bowel, bladder, and sexual function. Nerves going to the legs could also be affected, leading to paralysis and decreased sensation in the legs. All of these complications are extremely rare. Treating these rare complications may require other operations. However, the damage could be irreversible. In very rare cases, death could happen. There is also the possibility of the graft clogging, creating another blockage in the future. Hernias through the incision or incisions are possible. This happens when the internal wall of the abdomen is weak and intestines can push under the skin. This may require another operation. After the surgery, your health care provider may recommend a healthy diet that is low in salt as well as saturated and trans fat. To help prevent the arteries from clogging again, exercise regularly and don't smoke. Your health care provider will tell you how long it will take before your incisions are completely healed and when you can go back to work. This depends on your age, type of work, and medical condition as well as other factors. If you like this video, please like and share. For similar videos, subscribe to our channel. Summary When cholesterol clogs the blood vessels in the lower abdomen or upper leg, the blood flow to the legs is decreased. This causes the legs to hurt, especially after walking or exercising. This condition is known as arterial or vascular claudication. If the loss of blood supply becomes severe, tissue in the affected leg could die. The dead tissue may have to be cut off or amputated. Bypassing the clogged arteries in the lower abdomen and upper legs using a graft is very helpful in reducing the pain and preventing leg amputation. This operation is safe with good results. However, as you have learned, complications may happen. Knowing about them will help you detect them early if they happen. 
Your healthcare provider may recommend a healthy diet that is low in salt as well as saturated and trans fat. To help prevent the arteries from clogging again, exercise regularly and don't smoke. Thank you for using Explain.